Natural killer or NK cells adhere to virally infected or transformed cells and kill them by secreting cytotoxic agents such as perforin and granzyme. They recognise target cells and distinguish them from surrounding healthy tissue through a diverse array of activating and inhibitory receptors, as Morgan Hughes from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York explains. NK cells take in their activating stimulation and their inhibitory stimulation and they process it and develop a response that's based on the balance of the signals that they receive. What we wanted to do was to um, use single cell imaging approaches to develop a better sense of how the signal integration and, and processing works and um, to achieve some insight into the cell biological context in which the signal integration event took place. Hughes, together with his colleagues Prini Abevero and Ernesto Marino, plated NK cells on defined lipid bilayers and imaged them by turf microscopy. When the bilayers only contained ligands that stimulate the activating receptor NKG2D, the NK cells adhered to the surface as if it were an infected or tumorigenic cell. But if the bilayers also contained ligands that stimulate the inhibitory receptor KIA2DL2, the NK cells failed to adhere and moved around as if they didn't see any activating signal at all. That's a problem for us because the goal of our study was to understand the integration between activating and inhibitory signals. And that's very difficult to do if you don't see any evidence of activating signals to begin with. And so to circumvent this, we had to develop an approach that would, in essence, give the activating pathways a head start and then bring in the inhibitory stimulation later. And that's how we hit upon this idea of using photostimulation to do that. Hughes and colleagues designed a photoactivatable version of the MHC class 1 molecule that stimulates the inhibitory KIA2DL2 receptor on NK cells. Ultraviolet irradiation removes a bulky side chain from the ligand, allowing it to stimulate KIA2DL2 and inhibit NK cell activation. We threw the NK cells onto bilayers containing the activating ligands and this cage inhibitory ligand. And so the NK cells ignored the cage inhibitory ligand because they couldn't recognize it. And they began their activation process. And this involved uh, cells spreading on the surface, calcium flux, and the formation of these, these radially symmetric contacts that look like immunological synapses when viewed from the perspective of a cell that's going to be killed. When we then induced the, the inhibitory ligand, we saw clustering of the inhibitory receptor itself in the periphery of the contact. And then that was followed by a rather, rather dramatic retraction response in which the cell sort of curled up off of the surface as if it had touched something hot. Abbe Vera et al. then turned their attention to the downstream signaling events that caused NK cell retraction. It was known from previous work that inhibitory receptors like here 2 dl 2 signal via immunotyrosine-based inhibitory motifs or ITIN motifs located in their cytoplasmic domain. And these are phosphorylated by uh, Sark family kinases and that leads to the recruitment of tyrosine phosphatases like SHIP1 and SHIP2 and also the lipid phosphatase SHIP. And it turns out when we mutate the motifs, although we still see clustering of the inhibitory receptor, the retraction response doesn't occur. Similar effects were seen with the tyrosine phosphatase inhibitor, demonstrating that KIA2DL2 signaling was required to remodel the NK cell adhesive contact. Abbe Vera et al. thought that this remodeling might involve the actin cytoskeleton. Actin dynamics are important for the formation of all sorts of immunological synapses. Actin accumulates in a peripheral ring uh, at the edge of the contact. And it's in this domain that we see the accumulation of the cure 2 dl 2 clusters after we stimulate the receptor with the UV pulse. After unleashing this inhibitory signal, the actin reorganizes so that now its distribution tends to be flat over the entire contact. So not, not only do you get a retraction of the contact, but you get a reorganization of the actin. Again, blocking kia 2 dl 2 signaling with a tyrosine phosphatase inhibitor blocked this actin remodeling step. But what happens to the activating receptor NKG2D during this process? Hughes and colleagues looked at the receptor's dynamics in response to NK cell activation. The activating receptor forms two types of cluster that we can discern. Um, the first type of cluster forms in the uh, periphery and moves centripetally toward the center of the contact. And the second type of cluster is larger, and it sits near the center of the contact and doesn't really move. 
Co-staining with antiphosphotyrosine antibodies revealed that NKG2D receptor clusters were most active in the periphery, in the same region where the inhibitory receptor KIA2DL2 clustered upon UV stimulation. We looked to see what would happen to these two distinct pools of activating microcluster when we stimulated uh, the inhibitory receptor. And what we found was that very little happened to this immobile central pool, and in contrast, this peripheral mobile pool uh, was suppressed. So um, when we uh, unleashed the inhibitory signal um, in a cell that, that uh, had a number of peripheral microclusters happily moving towards the center, all of a sudden there would be a cessation in the formation of new peripheral microclusters of activating receptor. The actin depolymerizing drug latrunculin had a similar effect, suggesting that inhibitory signals might block NK cell activation through their effects on the actin cytoskeleton. NK cells express a wide variety of activating receptors that signal via a number of distinct mechanisms. And so perhaps the disposition of the actin cytoskeleton is something that all activating receptors need to signal. And so in that case, you aren't targeting specific signaling molecules that may only be important for distinct activating pathways. And so it makes the inhibitory response a little more uh, universal. So I think perhaps what our work has shown is that activating and inhibitory receptors seem to be integrated at the level of contact formation itself. By modulating the extent and the structure of that cell-cell contact, you can actually modulate the efficacy of activating signaling. So we'd like to actually test the idea that this pathway has a universal effect by looking at other activating receptors. In addition to that, we're of course very interested in piecing together the pathways that link here to DL2 stimulation with the effects that we're observing. We'd like to incorporate more specific loss of function approaches, siRNA, that kind of thing. In the meantime, you can read more about how NK cells respond to inhibitory signals in the paper by Abevira et al. Published in the February 21st edition of the Journal of Cell Biology.